Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, number 307. Doctor, do I need growth hormone too? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Your body is an incredible machine. (laughs) And the study of the way the machinery works is fascinating for some of us. And for others, it's like, don't bother with that. (laughs) But when you're young, you have a component in your body that feeds and and, uh, pushes your system to grow and and mature. Mm -hmm. And it's called growth hormone. That simple. And as you age, your body stops making growth hormone. No, nope, it doesn't. In the it same levels, in the same ways. <laughs> it, it still it, makes it. Finish okay. the sentence. It still makes it. I but it for you. Uh, you change. And now you throw me off. So what happens? And you don't grow anymore, you don't grow anymore. but your That's... tissue uh, has turnover. You make new cells all the time. and right. New brain cells, too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Brain those. cells, muscle cells, skin cells, everyone, all your cells are turning over and they're under the regulation of growth hormone. Okay. So sometimes though, as you age, other things start to happen to your body. You don't have the replenishment of the growth hormone that sustains you and uh, other things begin to happen and break down. And, and so you, you think, well, gosh, maybe I need some growth hormone. Mm-hmm. Maybe if I could get that back, then my body would be better. Our government regulates access to growth hormone. They don't want it generally dispersed. They say, first of all, it it really is more appropriately given to children that don't have it for some reason. They need it because they need to grow. (laughs) Secondly, uh, it is subject to a lot of abuse, and so we want to regulate and monitor and make sure that nobody's abusing it. And thirdly, it does cause, uh, in adults that are are getting it uh, extraneously, It does cause diabetes in some adults, and so we want to regulate and monitor for that as well. So just going to replace growth hormone when you're my age and your body's breaking down, you're not able to do things, you're fatigued, you're exhausted, what have you, is not readily available. Doctors don't do it. The government regulates it, and the general thought is, well, that's a a hormone for children. So what they do instead is what you do. Right. And, And they provide other things that can stimulate your own body's natural production of growth hormone, like testosterone. If you get testosterone replacement, when your testosterone begins to decline, uh, you reach a certain age, if you get it replaced, that will stimulate those parts of your body that manufacture growth hormone. Your so you make your own, which is not regulated by the government. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thankfully, not yeah. yet. Yeah. So we have that available. See, growth hormone is, human growth hormone is a shot has to be refrigerated, so it's hard to keep, and it has to be, and then it's given in a pen. Uh, like an epi pen? Like an epi, well, yeah, but it has many, like more like Victoza, like the okay. diabetic drugs okay. that have oh, the little shot. tiny yeah. doses. So with a tiny uh, a tiny uh, needle into the stomach, but that do- you don't have to take human growth hormone, and really we can't access it without coming under the scrutiny of the right. government, right. of the U.S. government. So... The first thing that stimulates growth hormone and the more the most the easiest, the most positive, is by replacing testosterone with in pellet form, you increase growth hormone, usually by about forty points. Not in the other forms, just in pellet form? Yeah, usually just in pellet form. The other the other forms of growth hormone don't work as effectively to increase growth hormone. The, so that's the other one, forms of testosterone. Yes. Yes. The other forms of testosterone. So testosterone in pellet form. In people who have an intact pituitary and haven't had a brain trauma, usually increase their own growth hormone, which we test by looking at a test called IGF-1, and we watch it go up by 40 points, usually every four months for the first year in women, and even more every four months in men, as long as men are active. And, And what that represents is... Usually we can see it in people who are, who are withering. 
their muscles are gone, their bones are osteoporotic, they're starting to they're starting to lean over. Shoulders get concave. Their shoulders are yeah. in. They, you know, they've lost their they've lost their biceps. They've right. lost, and they usually have a lot of you fat can around see the aging middle. People wither, and that's how we can tell somebody who's old. They get a dowager hump, and their head goes down from far away. Yeah. I mean, you can see it, it's a silhouette, and this is a lack of growth hormone slash a lack a lack of testosterone. Okay. So when we give testosterone and we watch the growth hormone go up. We also watch muscle come back and bone get thicker and hair grow better and nails grow better. And people look younger because there's a turnover of the cells right. in their, in their uh, skin. Elasticity in the skin. More yeah. Sure. We grow, we grow collagen. We grow elasticity. I mean, it's better than a facelift, right. but you don't have to take growth hormone to get this effect. You can take testosterone to get it. Right. So when, and, and there are other things that you can take that, mm -hmm. that supplement the effect that's generated by the testosterone. If you don't, if it doesn't work with testosterone to get you into a normal range, a normal mm -hmm. healthy range, which is in some books 200, in my book 150 to 350. So some of the, the experts, right. some of the experts think it should be 200. Right. But if you should be in my book, you should be at least 150 to be healthy and up to 350. If you're in that range then we don't treat it again. We don't give you something else right. in terms of a drug to treat it. So we can bump it a little more with some things like supplements called okay. arginine and ornithine is a combination of amino acids that helps bump growth hormone. You, growth hormone goes up in your own system at night. So you say so you take it at night. not prescription? Non-prescription supplements over the counter. Okay. So arginine and ornithine is the primary first step for people who just want to bump it a little bit, and that's what weightlifters do. So we've already done, say we have a patient who already has testosterone, his growth hormone's coming up, and I'm talking to people who are over 40 and aging. Then we add uh, arginine ornithine to help their growth hormone get a little higher, because it's, it's not going to make a huge difference, but it does help and does stimulate uh, the production of growth hormone internally and helps make muscle. So those are, those are needed, that's a needed supplement. And then we use vitamin D, and everyone needs vitamin D for lots of reasons, but they absolutely have to have it to have normal growth hormone levels and to help growth hormone work. Mm -hmm. So you should be taking vitamin D, especially if you live in the United States, unless you're in, in uh, Arizona or Florida, I mean, really, or yeah. work outside 24, right. I mean, 12 hours a day, then you're not, you're not getting enough vitamin D. So... And the darker your skin, the more you need vitamin D because you don't absorb it from the sun as you get tan. So it's very important to take vitamin D. Almost everyone needs it, and that helps your growth hormone. If you are a male, DHEA is also good to take at very low doses if you're already on testosterone. Now, is that a prescription? Nope. These are all supplements are all over supplements. the counter. All right. So DHEA is, is, a, is a hormone that's a supplement. You can get it right. at any health food store. And men can take that to improve both their growth hormone and their testosterone level. If you're on pellets, you don't really need much of it. Okay. So, um, and then... Any supplement that increases L-DOPA, they put lots of other amino acids that increases dopamine in your brain, and they put that into weightlifters, protein drinks, and things like that. So mm -hmm. all of those increase growth hormone. So your own production of growth hormone. Right. Okay? So those are all over-the-counter. You can do that yourself. You can add to your so growth you hormone like that way. So you go to one of these GHC places and buy uh, a protein supplement. That has powder, these things in it. It has mm -hmm. all this already in mm -hmm. it. You don't have to have 75 bottles of something on your... No, you don't have to. Probably you have to have a bottle of vitamin D, though. I don't think they can put enough vitamin D in, in that fashion. Okay. I could be wrong on that. Okay. I haven't looked at it for vitamin it out, D. If you're interested in... But you also, if you want more growth hormone, you have to not do certain things. Okay? Okay. So you have to not eat carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, especially simple sugars, shut down your growth hormone. I mean, that's another reason. Not only is it bad have tons of carbohydrates, but you're just hurting yourself. If you're eating a lot of carbohydrates and you're doing these other things, you're just Xing it out. Basically it's balanced. So if you take, um, steroids, corticosteroids, things that are the steroids that are from the adrenal gland, not from the testicle or the ovary, but the adrenal gland steroids that also lowers growth hormone. So 
because corticosteroids are for stress and for running and for, you know, for protecting your body for stress. So they often break down muscle to make, to make energy. Right. So what happens is they also work at the growth hormone level and shut it down. Okay. So grow, so steroids in themselves are an anti-growth hormone kind of medication. Right. Um, obesity and fat gain, that goes along with the carbohydrates usually, but people who are sedentary, that lowers your growth hormone. Um, also, if you don't exercise, because exercise stimulates growth hormone, no exercise decreases your growth hormone. Right. And then the last is those of you who have had breast cancer are, not, are on tamoxifen. Tamoxifen lowers growth hormone. So people who are on tamoxifen notice that their muscles are going away. Even if they didn't have a low growth hormone to start out with, they're suppressing it with the tamoxifen. So paradox, you have breast cancer, you're on tamoxifen. You're not making growth hormone. Your growth hormone is dropping. Or it's suppressed. Suppressed. Can you then get it uh, with government approval and support, or do you still need to get it through taking these different supplements to uh, cause your own body to react, try to make it? First of all, there's a false belief, but the FDA hasn't been notified yet. I mean, they haven't figured this out, although there's a lot of research to support it, that growth hormone is supposedly a hormone that stimulates the growth of cancers. It doesn't. It's been proven it doesn't. Okay. Right. But it's one of those so the, things that people believe. So people wouldn't be given growth hormone mm -hmm. if they have cancer mm -hmm. just because of that. Okay. Yet your own growth hormone stimulation right. uh, is fine. You can use these over-the-counter methods to right. stimulate your growth hormone. And we give testosterone pellets to women with breast cancer because it helps them survive well, there was another their, there their therapy that, that for would, breast cancer. That would cause negative results if you had breast cancer too, and the research says it doesn't. It doesn't. No, and testosterone actually is very well accepted mm -hmm. by all the oncologists in St. Louis now mm -hmm. that it's fine as long as we make sure it doesn't convert into estrogens, and you have to be aware of that and be monitoring that. Right. So we can give that to patients who have had breast cancer or are at risk for it, they don't take the estrogen. I don't. That really doesn't cause breast cancer, but people aren't so sure of that right, yet. Right. So we do what's within the the standard as much as we can. So one of the things that when you explain these things to me, you talk, and I glaze over it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, because your medical knowledge is so much more precise and important than mine. Uh, tell me about the feedback system because you you make reference to that all the time. Mm -hmm. How does the feedback system work? So all hormones um, are, are regulated by a feedback system. You have your pituitary sends out stimulatory hormones to every gland. So you get stimulation from this part of your brain, right. goes into your bloodstream. It stimulates the ovary to ovulate, the ovary to make testosterone, the testicle to make testosterone, the adrenal gland to make cortisol and aldosterone and epinephrine. So it's like the foreman that comes in and says, hey guys, breaks over, time to go to work. Right. So so all of the, the hormones from the pituitary stimulate another gland to make a hormone. Right. But you have to have a balance. So when that hormone becomes, goes to a normal level and circulates back to the pituitary, then the pituitary stops making it, stops making the, the stimulatory hormone. So that's the feedback. You, you have a stimulation, you go to a gland, it makes the hormone, then it goes back to your pituitary and says, stop. Because the balance, the, the body is all about, life is all about homeostasis. Right, balance. You get knocked out of balance and then your Bio system balance. works to restore <laughs> the balance. Yeah, that's exactly right. And this is how a hormone works. So say when I give testosterone to a man, usually when I give it to women, they're not making any. But when I give it to a man and he's making very small amounts, mm -hmm. That dose will go to his pituitary and say, stop, stop stimulating the testicle. We've got enough. Right. Then the, the LH that goes to the testicles stops being produced. So, so when you talk about the feedback system, you're really talking about the mechanics of homeostasis. Right. How, but how they measure internally when to, when to work, when to produce, and when to stop producing. There's feedback systems at every level, right. in every microscopic area of our cells, right. of our 
inside our cells, in our mitochondria. I mean, every part of our body has this very complex feedback system, which proves there's a God. But in my in my book, I mean, it's so complicated. Yeah. To, so for me to break this down into this just general <laughs> feedback system is a way for me to, to describe it. Mm -hmm. But there are many other mechanisms working. So if I give any hormone, like growth hormone, if, if you're getting growth hormone with an with a shot, right. it feeds back to your brain and says, don't make any more stimulatory so hormone. Which it's natural process. Right. Don't. Well, it actually feeds back to the, um, the thalamus, sorry, part of the brain that, that then sends a message to the pituitary, but, but it's, it's a, it's a hierarchy of stimulation. So when well, we give it, we shut it down. So, so you make reference to another term. That's one I'm not familiar with. Secretagog. Okay, so that's a that's a term that we use for um, hormones that stimulate the pituitary, okay? okay, to make to actually stimulate another hormone. So they're very specific. Secretagogs can stimulate the pituitary to make more FSH or LH. Then that would then stimulate ovaries or testicles, right. or it can stimulate growth hormone. So a secretagogue from, from the thalamus actually is made to then uh, actually stimulate the pituitary. So we can give those without causing that feedback system to shut down our own production. And it's always better to stimulate your own hormones if you can, uh, because they have their own feedback system. They manage themselves. Once we stimulate it, then it manages itself and it comes up to a normal level. Okay. And it, it balances itself. Mm -hmm. There's a lot less work and, and less risk with something like that. Kind of like putting that. air in the tires. Yeah. You don't have to, like, do something artificial or extra beyond that. Right. So, and that's what we're doing. So, when we use secretagogues, they're a whole different thing and the government doesn't regulate them as carefully, at least not that we know of at this time. Mm -hmm. And there's... Uh, several different secretagogues that are used. My favorite, Sermorlane. It's a it's a medication made by a compounding pharmacy that you can you can put under your tongue and dissolve. You need and you need a prescription. You for need that? a prescription for okay. this, and it dissolve and you take it hopefully at night. But if you forget it, you can take it in the morning. But it stimulates your own production of growth hormone. Okay. So in people who have um, still an intact pituitary, their pituitary is working. Mm -hmm. We then can stimulate it to make more growth hormone if they're low. We don't do this in people who aren't low. It is, it is restricted on that basis. If we don't have a depressed growth hormone, I usually do it like this. Somebody comes in, I give them testosterone. If their growth hormone doesn't come up and they, and, or they have head injuries, then I use some morlin to stimulate their growth hormones so they get the full effect of testosterone therapy. I don't use the growth hormone injections because it actually causes an autoimmune reaction to the pancreas and can cause type 1 diabetes like oh, kids have. There's some new research that's out that's saying pretty strongly that people that have traumatic brain injuries do need growth hormone. They do need growth hormone, but you start with the secretagogue first. Okay. And you, you see if you chain. work your way up to see if they can sti be stimulated. If they haven't had damage in a certain place, then you can stimulate their production of growth hormone. And if that doesn't work, then they do need growth hormone mm -hmm. because that's part of why they can't regenerate brain cells. They can't regenerate muscle, muscle mass. Even with testosterone, you need some growth hormone there too to actually produce a younger, healthier body. And these are usually men or women who are young. They've had traumatic brain injury, concussions, and they so, aren't making young levels. So essentially, when you're young, you need growth hormone to help you grow. As you get older, you don't need as much of that. Your body starts to dial it back, but you do need some. And if that gets out of balance, then the first level of response is to get testosterone, and or secretagogues mm -hmm. that try to encourage your body to make its own growth hormone again, the way that to the level that you need it. And so it'll stay in balance. If that is not successful, if you have some additional thing like traumatic brain injury, then there are 
ways to get it externally, but you need government approval. Mm -hmm. The doctors need to, to be able to say to the government, this is what I'm doing and why, and get mm -hmm. approval uh, so that everybody's happy. Uh, and, and so because it can be subject to abuse, it can lead to problems like diabetes. And, and your so doctor we, can lose their license. If for, they do it for just doing that, even if you if it would help as somebody by the government. as defined yeah. by the government, because yeah. they have a protocol that right. Mark Gordon has in his books that you can follow right. to actually give somebody growth hormone who has a traumatic brain injury. So doctors can learn that too, and protect themselves so that they can do the kind of medicine that needs to be done. Yes. All right. So it's a challenge. Be aware of it. Uh, and as you age, it's a thing to be more aware of. And that's why these supplements that are offered in addition to taking testosterone are critical. And discuss it with your doctor. Is this what's going on? Is this what I'm doing? Or is this what I need to do? Will this make me better? Most doctors will laugh, though. So if you go to an anti-aging doctor or an integrative medicine doctor, they'll understand what you're talking about. Right. But most doctors go, nobody needs it. Because yeah. that's really not in their literature. It's in ours. Yeah. And in endocrine literature, but it's not in theirs yet. It will be. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.